we go to the next and important step, and that's the application of the crinoline. As I mentioned, I have cut the crinoline to basically the size that we need, but it's not obviously cut to the shape we need. We'll lay the crinoline on there so that we can be sure we're going to get enough of a wrap down around the belly and enough of a wrap up over the top of the back. And just kind of spread that down into place like so. Move that over a little bit and just kind of begin to impress it into the wet paint. How fast does this paint dry, somebody might ask. Well, that depends upon the environment in which you're using it. If you're in the middle of the summer and you're in your Alabama garage, your Georgia, sweet Georgia home, whatever, uh, and it's 95 in the shade, this paint may go real fast. If you're outside in the garage and in uh, Saginaw, Michigan or whatever, and it's December, it's obviously, obviously gonna go a little slower. So there's, there's no set way of saying, uh, be prepared because this paint is gonna set off in, in X number of minutes or you know, so forth. You, you begin to position the crinoline and once it's in, in basically where you want it, you start trimming it away. In our first DVD, we talked about the fact that the scales on a trout or a salmon do not run clear out to the tip of the nose. They, they kind of curl off right somewhere between the preopercle and the operacle. These are the two gill covers, the, the preopercle being the short cover and the operacle being the largest of the gill covers, the, the second gill cover here. About midway in between those is where the scale line will stop on the forehead of the fish. So usually I will go in and with the scissors, I'll cut about where that is and just cut a radius around and then I start working my way around the gill cover or the opercles. Keep in mind that there's a collarbone, actually it's two bones that lay directly behind uh, the gill cover here. And so you don't want scales on that either because it is literally that. It is a bone or two bones that kind of lay side by side or attached together. So when we cut this away, we just make sure that we allow for what I'll call the collarbone, okay? And just snip this away like so. And we know we have scales that come up underneath the chin, so we can, can trim this off here and, and leave a little excess because when we get down to the belly part of it, we'll want to make sure that, whoop, that we cover that. Okay, tap that down into place. Paint is still wet, crinoline still moves, it'll still adjust. You know, the abbreviation, or I'm sorry, not the abbreviation, but the interpretation of the word taxidermy it means the taxiing of or the movement of dermy, epidermis, dermy skin, right? Well, in a way, what they're doing with a hide, you're doing with the crinoline. You're literally moving it around, adjusting it around, sliding it into position and into place until it lays exactly where you want it, all right? When, when you have it exactly how and where it should lay on the, on the side, you've got the the head area cut out, I come up here to the dorsal fin. And watch where I'm cutting here now. You don't just cut right straight up to it. I'm gonna cut down along this angle. Why? Uh, because if I do it that way, the, the uh, crinoline will fold right back and it'll cover a part of the uh, back right up to the edge of the fin on the back side. So we, we've made the cut down along the dorsal fin and, and that will allow the crinoline to just fold right down over the back and still lay up close to the dorsal fin uh, on the back. Now, if you have a concave or convex situation and the, and the crinoline just doesn't want to pull down real tight, it's a simple matter to just make one cut like so, and that will allow you to pull that one like so, and this one like that, and it allows it to just tuck right into place. We also know that uh, some fish have scales that go right up onto their fins. 
uh, some of the bass, as an example, are identified by the fact that they do or do not have scales partway up onto their, onto their fins. Trout and salmon don't have scales on their fins, so when we cut away uh, the slot away from the, the dorsal fin in particular, we make sure that we cut it in such a way that we do not have scale pattern going up to uh, or onto the side of the scale or onto the side of the, the dorsal fin or any of the fins for that matter. So doing that we just cut a straight line right across the bottom of the dorsal fin. That allows us to take uh, the crinoline, bring it around on the back side and pull it down in place just like so. One of the things that you're going to find that, that uh, makes this work so well is that when the black starts to set up it gets sticky and it holds the crinoline just just perfect. The other colors tend to be a little on the thin and runny side even while they're drying and they just don't want to hold the crinoline. What we just did on the dorsal fin we also do on the adipose fin. And just cut that down at an angle like that. See if that'll fold down. If it won't we make another cut about midway in there like so. And pull one in, snug it down, make sure it's laying up tight on the body. Pull the other side in, make it pull down tight, kind of tap it in place with your finger, thumb or what, like so. And then the same way that we cut across the base of the, of the dorsal fin, you do the same thing with the adipose or adipose fin. Before I do that, let me take away this part right here. We're going to cut around the, the, the meaty portion of the tail. Again, being careful that we don't do any scales out on the actual rays of the tail. And I know that I'm going to have to uh, cut that little notch in here again to get this to lay down tight. Push the point of the scissors into the crinoline. Cut the slot so that the crinoline will lay over onto the back side of the adipose fin. And you pull that down into place. Again, making sure that as you pull it down, the paint holds onto the crinoline and that it literally embeds itself right in the soft paint. You work your way around. Very important to, to watch what's happening because if you get a bubble uh, in the crinoline, if it's not pulled down snug into the black paint, uh, it could be that the paint is not thick enough uh, that you didn't put on enough and it isn't uh, sticky enough to actually hold the crinoline in place. If that happens, it's not a problem. You just take it out, give it a dust or two of, of you know, more black paint, go back to work. And so that's all, all that takes. So we do this all the way around, secure the crinoline from one end of the fish to the other. Now I'm sure that some of you are going, okay, yeah, oh, well, that's great. That's, that's going to take care of that side, but what about the flip side? Well, one of the nice things about this particular method is that if I were going to do this fish again as a uh, pedestal piece where I could view it literally 360 degrees around on all sides, when I've finished doing the crinoline on this side, it's a simple, simple matter uh, to just take the crinoline off of one side flip it upside down, put it over on the other side, and how ironic is this? The fin pattern is exactly the same. It goes right back on, and we do the scale pattern on the reverse side.